Welcome back everybody to the Lackluster Channel. In November of 2022, I called out Frank Sloop. Frank Sloop. Don't try and church it up, son. Don't you mean Frank Sloop? Naming you that, your daddy must have really hated you. You're wrong, brother. The star and deputy of the Pinal County Sheriff's Office, copaganda show paid for by your tax dollars. And while chasing him down, he not only failed to wear his own seatbelt, but also told his civilian counterpart, the cameraman, also a sheriff's office employee, that he didn't have to wear his. 71 at a thousand feet. Nice. Perfect. All right, we'll keep up there so you can take a picture of it. I feel like this guy knows what's about to happen. Oh yeah. As they pull Nate over, Deputy Slope tells his passenger that he doesn't need to fasten his seatbelt, and it appears that Deputy Slope doesn't have his fastened either, confirmed by the audible chime in the dashcam video. I don't know why you put your seatbelt on. We're not going anywhere. That's true. Well, this turns into a pursuit, then we are. All while ticketing others for non-crime, non-victim, traffic infractions. To say that Sloop is a cowardly hypocrite hiding behind the badge is an understatement, as Direct D and others working in the area with him would soon find out that Frank wasn't always working traffic with nearly 20 years of experience. He had actually been promoted to sergeant at a previous agency. What happened in Maricopa County, Frank Sloop? Why don't you say what happened in Maricopa County? Brady Lister, can you even testify in court? Where's your sergeant strikes, Brady Lister? But he wasn't a sergeant for long, as he was alleged to have been caught forging documents. We're just trying to expose a Brady List cop that likes to adjust his overtime pay in Maricopa. So I don't I don't know what you're talking about on that. I'm on I'm on the Brady List for, for changing what? for changing the sign off date on Wait, a report. Fixing paperwork. I know exactly what you're on the It's list it's for. a dude, dude it's, your friends that your old friends are snitching on you. I don't, dude, it's public knowledge. I don't care. He not only left the agency that he was working at to pursue a career in Penal County, but he was also placed on the Brady list. This list is made by prosecutors that show officers who shouldn't be trusted on the stand and are typically not called to testify due to their previous shortcomings. The driver in the video mentioned previously was determined to fight his citation, and we believe that expressing that sentiment in my publication is why his citation was never submitted to the courts. Um. I really hope that this goes to court. I hope, I hope with every fiber of my being that I get to go and see him again. Um, because there's not a judge anywhere in the state of Arizona that would entertain that tomfoolery that just happened there. So hopefully I'll get to see him again and then we'll, uh, we'll have another cordial conversation. So, let's see. Nate did indeed appear in court to contest the citation. Deputy Slope never entered the ticket, nor did he show up and the citation was vacated. As for the seatbelt violations for the deputies and cameraman, there is no word that any have been filed with the courts either. Perhaps to save Frank Sloop the embarrassment of losing a case because his word can't be used as testimony? We are unsure, but it hasn't stopped law and crime from airing the same exact episode unedited and unupdated on their platform. However, all of that is to share this section of video with you from that interaction. Okay. See your driver's license, please. Yes, sir, can I ask what you pull over for? Absolutely, as soon as you see your driver's license, I will be very happy to tell you. That's not how it works. If, can you tell, first of all, what's your name and your badge number? I'm sorry, I do this for a living, you don't. I tell you how this works. No. Let me see your driver's license or I'm going to pull you out of your car and arrest you for failing to provide ID. This is a legal request. I don't want to hear any other words out of your mouth except here's my driver's license. Please. Deputy Slope is technically correct. There are no laws in Arizona that force a law enforcement officer to tell you the reason that they pulled you over. Some agencies across the United States have policies that demand an officer explain the reason for the stop, but when I asked the Pino County Sheriff's Office for documentation that covers the policies and procedures governing a deputy's behavior during a traffic stop, they claimed that there are no policies on how a deputy should conduct himself on a traffic stop. There is, however, both the United States Constitution and case law that are relevant. During a lawful traffic stop, you are required to provide the officer with your license, registration, and insurance documents. That being said, under the Fourth Amendment, we the people are supposed to be secure in our persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures. It seems more than reasonable that an officer should have to articulate their reasonable suspicion or probable cause to a driver prior to demanding he surrenders his right to privacy from invasion by state agents. 
But, as you'll see, Deputy Slope feels that you should have to surrender your papers any time an officer pulls you over, surrendering your Fourth Amendment rights first, without knowing why or if the officer is operating within the constitutional limitations to his authority. A little more than a month ago, I began posting pop quizzes to my community page. One question asked, true or false? Police officers are required to tell you the reason for the traffic stop as soon as they approach your vehicle. The answer is false and I provided context by including that while it's common for officers to inform you for the reason of the stop, they aren't legally required to do so immediately upon approaching, adding that I personally believe that they should have to tell you exactly why they pulled you over immediately upon pulling you over. But power does what it wants. Now you should always ask, but if you refuse to give them your documents until they tell you why they pulled you over, you could be arrested. And if they don't tell you right away, they should tell you before the stop concludes, but they don't always do that even. Which is why you always record your interactions with law enforcement and other state officials. Now for most of the country, that is still the case. Law enforcement officers do not need to tell you why they pulled you over. However, despite my inability to adapt to California's way of life, as is evidenced by the display of California non-compliant devices, I cannot in good faith refuse to report to you the wonderful thing that Gavin Newsom has done and takes effect in January of 2024 in an effort to reduce pretextual stops where an officer stops a pedestrian or vehicle for something mundane with the intent of searching the person or vehicle to find evidence of a larger crime. Governor Gavin Newsom signed AB 2773. This adds section 2806.5 to the vehicle code which reads, a peace officer making a traffic or pedestrian stop before engaging in questioning related to a criminal investigation or traffic violation shall state the reason for the stop. The officer shall document the reason for the stop or any citation or police report resulting from the stop. Do you know why I pulled you over today? We've all heard it if we've been pulled over by an officer while driving, but a new state law prohibits officers from asking that question. Rather, they must tell you why you're being stopped in the first place. All officers now required to reveal why they pull a driver over and report it to the state. Now this is great news, but of course, the addition includes a way for the officers to bypass the new code. It further states that subdivision A does not apply when the officer reasonably believes that withholding the reason for the stop is necessary to protect life or property from imminent threat, including, but not limited to, cases of terrorism or kidnapping. And kidnapping, of course, is still misspelled on the government website. Loopholes in traffic stops and in this new state law, according to Barry Axios. This is just another law that's a gray area law. But perhaps further troubling is the fact that there is no penalization for the officer if they fail to meet the standard of this new code. Don't have a consequence that makes them say, OK, I'm being fined or I'm being penalized. I can't do this. Then what? I mean, it's, it's your word versus my word. You want the community to kind of stand up and celebrate it as if, you know, it'll change things. Will it really change things? That's all I've got for you today. A little bit of a different video for you to end 2023. Might do some more of these styles in the future, but is this a step in the right direction? And uh, just so you know, my uh, sergeant is Sergeant Erickson. He's the person that you're going to... Thanks for putting your window up. They said you want to talk to me anymore. <laughs> oh my god, what a f dude. I know. You go pull him over? Yeah! I think that he has a. He's got a little issue with the definition of what law is. Um, and f I mean, the Fourth Amendment obviously applies because I temporarily seized him during a traffic stop and he yielded to my authority. Um, but I don't think he understands exactly that. Me telling him why I pulled him over has nothing to do with the Fourth Amendment. Like, I don't think that that's in there anywhere. That one didn't age quite so well. If you like this video, check out some of the others that are linked on screen. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.